give you a warning, kind of like a red flare, if you will. Church is about to start in three minutes. Hey, hey, I found that verse I was telling you about that I think would be perfect for this morning. Nay, 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 right now I am doing the service countdown, trying to get everybody ready for church. Oh, sorry, sorry everybody. Uh, hang on just a second. No, I really would like to read this no, passage. you hang on. I'm trying to equip them and empower them to be ready for church. All right. Hey, with that, uh, it's time to uh, finish up the coffee and go ahead and let's guzzle down some of those donuts, all right? Coffee donuts. I got a donut. Don't mind if I do, all right? Mm. Go ahead and finish up conversations, okay? Any type of conversation that you have you need to get done, all right? Nobody understands what you're saying. There you go. No, there you go. no they there don't. You go. It makes also, no sense. Also, breath mints. If you got a breath mint, take it now so you can talk to people, maybe your visitors. You don't know, right? What? Breath mint. Breath mint. No, I don't know what you said, but here you need my things. Mm. Now, back to this, okay? Mm. Before that, this. All the generation X, Y, and Zers, get out those Bible apps. Oh, or, or, just do what the greatest generation did and actually bring a Bible to church. Just saying. Which brings me back to the Bible. The passage I wanted that, to read I thought, though, we could do a little trivia. While we're all just sitting here wasting some time, I did some trivia on my little iPad here. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay, here. okay, okay. I do love trivia. Okay, okay all right. Okay, see go. if you know the answer to this question. Here we go. Wait, that's... That's your question? That's my question. That is a Bush League question. What? No, it's that a good... Is pathetic. What? Oh, here, look, trade me. Okay, if you want a real good question, try this one. <laughs> Did you just make that up on the spot? Uh, the answer is hunting license. Hunting license. The answer to my question was 26. There are 26 letters in the German alphabet. And nobody cares because that's a pathetic trivia question. It's a great Here's another one. one. Try this one. That's not even a question. <laughs> I know. But can you imagine when the pastor walks in and everybody's trying to lick their elbows? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Finish no, your, no. Coffee. Finish okay. your coffee. Finish your coffee. Here. Okay. okay. Now it's time for what I like to call Bible. Trivia! Answer that question, friend. Hey, friend. Um, you said you had some scripture, and before time runs out, this may be a really good time for you to share the scripture that huh? you had. Before time runs out, did you want to share some of your scripture? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because uh, we don't want time to run out, do we? Nope, nope, no. nope. No. Where was that? Because, you know, there's only so many seconds left. Did you stop talking? Okay? Right, I'm just trying You're to... distracting me. I thought you'd have it memorized Shh, by now. quit talking, okay? okay? I'm trying to find it. I forgot where it was, okay. and I'm going to find it. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. It was in... Find uh, it. Let's oh, see what you got. It. got it. Okay. okay. Time's up. No, no! Was that the alarm? I hit snooze. Was that the first time it went off? Oh no! How many times did you hit that thing? I dreamt I hit it like nine times. That wasn't a dream. We're going to be late for Easter service. Wake up, wake up, wake up, come on. Wake up, it's Easter, we're late! Wake up, wake up, ow, ow, uh, wake up, this is not a drill. Do we do drills? You better hurry. We get breakfast. Peeps! You guys help each other. You! The surprise! I was a surprise. No! You! My name's Molly. Well, let's get moving. Come on, close her on the drift. What's a surprise? Did you tell Molly she was a surprise? I'm so tired that she's lucky that's all I said. Honey, which time? Not that one. How do you know which? Your first choice is always bad. <laughs> The doggy? Uh, yep. You can finish in the car. Go, 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 Is everybody in here? No, I'm Mary Molly. We're good. Grandpa's not coming? Grandpa! It's a great day for golf here at Augusta National. Today the Masters is the final round. Wide open. Come on. You can dress in the car. He cannot dress in the car. My children are in there. Can't you just let an old man rest in peace? 
Does everybody have shoes? Oh, it's too late for that now. Don't tell me if you don't. My socks don't match. My shoe has a stain. I only have flip flops. Just turn around. We look like a circus. Well, good morning, Hope family, and happy Easter. We're so glad to see all of your beautiful faces this morning. And to those of you joining us online, we're so glad that you're here. Let's all stand this morning as we open our hearts. We join our voices together and raise our hands in praise to our King. Death is defeated, Hope, and the King is alive. Amen. Separated until the veil is torn. The moment that hope was won, and guilt was pardoned once and for all. Captivated and no longer bound by chains. Dead in empty grave, the sinner and the sacred resolve. Another creation, sing with me now. Lift up your voice to lay a burden down. Another creation, sing with me now. Up the heavens, let his glory resound. Time has faded, and we see him face to face. Every doubt erased, forever we will worship the King. Sing with me now Lift up your voice and lay your burden down And know the creation Sing with me now Fill up the heavens, let His glory resound today and we celebrate we celebrate that the tomb is empty 
in the darkest hour when things seemed hopeless, Lord, you made a way. We lay our hearts before you today. We stand on your truth. We are free because you are alive. We sing of it today. Who but you could breathe and leave a trail of galaxies and dream of me? What kind of love is writing my story till the end when mercy's pen only you what kind of king would choose to wear a crown that bleeds and scars to win my heart what kind of love tells me I the reason he can't stay inside the grave? You, is it you standing here before my eyes? Every part of my heart cries.
Amen. The tomb is empty.
What a powerful name. What a powerful name. Nothing can stand against him. Nothing can stand against What a powerful name. What a powerful name. It's a powerful name, and we sing it this morning. What a powerful name. It's a powerful name. We declare it today. What a powerful name it is. you, God. Hope as we're joined here today, we are in celebration that the tomb is empty and we know that our God is alive. But on Friday, Jesus went to a cross and he poured out his whole life for you. There is nothing that you could ever do to earn that gift. It is free to everyone. And all you have to do is open your heart and believe that God loves you so much. He sent his only son to die in your place. And because of his death, because of his body and his blood, we are made clean. Everything we'd ever done washed away and in that resurrection on that morning when he rose he conquered death no longer do we need to be afraid of the end for this body this time is temporary and that's because of Jesus and in communion we remember as a family we remember the price that was paid for us we reflect on the sacrifice made on our behalf. If you do not have communion, just go ahead and raise your hand and an usher will bring you everything you need. And to our family joining us online, this is a good time to get your communion elements. At any time during this song, you are free to take communion. There is not a requirement here for you to participate in communion. We are a family of believers. And together, we remember the body and the blood of our Savior. We remember the love of our King and our Father who made a way that we can be with him forever. We celebrate together our friend and our brother, our Savior and our King, Jesus. Stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. As heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever he is gone.
stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated.
Hey, Hope Church, you glad to be here today? Wow. You are a sight for sore eyes. It's so good to see all of you. I wish you all could see what I see. It's a beautiful sight, and I want to thank each of you for being here with all my heart. I want to thank those of you on our online church that are watching. We're two uh, locations, online and in person, one church. There was a pastor and a priest and a rabbi that were debating about who was the best at their trade. And they decided they would go out in the woods and see who could convert a bear. And uh, so they go off into the woods. Then they come back after their experience. And first the pastor shows up and then the priest and the pastor goes, you won't believe this. I found a bear. I preached the gospel with all my heart. And that bear let me baptize him. And the priest goes, oh, wow, that's great. He goes, well, I, I found a bear and I taught him the catechism. And that bear had communion with me. And I was like, wow. And just then, the rabbi comes walking through the woods. He's scarred and scratched and bleeding and black and blue and bloody. And they go, what happened? He goes, well, I probably shouldn't have started with circumcision. <laughs> so there's your Easter joke. Some of you may need that explained. I don't know. But I'm glad you started your Easter by worshiping God, and God is glad, and that's what matters most. And I want to thank you. I know it's a busy time, and you have plans, and you took time to, to worship what the Easter is all about. And I, I, I appreciate that so much. You know, I'm going to do a different message that I've ever done on Easter. Um, usually I just stay with the narrative in the Gospels about Jesus' uh, rising from the grave after the cross. And of course, we are going to allude to that. It's no Easter without that. Uh, but I want to preach something out of the Old Testament uh, this year that I've never done on Easter before. My title is Rattle. I don't know what comes to your mind when you hear rattle. You know, baby rattles are cute. And those of you who are parents, you've had a baby rattle. That's cute. Um, our land is, uh, we have land on the, the lower part of paradise and when we play there there's another kind of rattle we have to watch out for you know that rattle and i hate hearing that rattle i'm thankful god gave them the ability to do that and they'll warn you as you come close in fact as they move into fight or flight uh they get more intense <laughs> with that rattle you know and it's a scary rattle but i want to talk about the rattle of bones coming to life dry bones coming to life from a vision that God gave to a guy named Ezekiel. If you have your Bible or your Bible app on your phone, you want to read along, you can go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel was a prophet uh, 600 years before the coming of Jesus. And he's prophesying to people who had gone into Babylonian exile. They had turned their backs on God. God had always wanted just a relationship with his people. And the, the cultures around them got into multiple of gods, little g. And um, the Israelites kind of started getting into that. And God was upset. And trusting in man, in iron and, and chariots and, and uh, what man can do. And so God allowed them to go into captivity by the Babylonians. So you have this prophet Ezekiel who was a priest at the time. And then he's carried off into exile with them. And his job is to preach. And a prophet would foretell the future or he would just be a, a spokesman for God, a mouthpiece for God. And Ezekiel's told to do these certain things uh, to teach the people. And one of the things that's a famous um, vision that he has is uh, in 37 where uh, God brings them to life. And the lesson today is that God is able to raise dead, literally and metaphorically he's able to raise the dead and speak life into his people this past week we got a call that jonathan wines uh some of you know jonathan wines and jason wines and deb wines jonathan had a massive heart attack and they worked on him for an hour and the doctor told the family expect the worst this doesn't look good and they put him in a coma and to try to help cool off his brain, they were hoping that they could limit the damage. And then the day came for them, him to wake up. And again, they're expecting the worst, praying for the best, of course. And Jonathan woke up. 
and Jonathan started joking around with his brother. And this morning I got a text that he's doing great, preparing to go home. And it's one of those things. Amen. He did get a stint in his heart, and he's only 48 to have such serious trouble. And uh, it's just one of those times when you pray and God answers as you're praying. You're like, amen, thank you, Lord, and you see the power of God. And I want to show you today in this text something. You know, a lot of times people say that the thought uh, of life after death is only found in the New Testament. And of course, that is a big part of the New Testament. But it's also seen bits and pieces and taught sometimes in the Old Testament. And this chapter is one of the famous chapters where it gives people a vision of life after death. Verse 1 kind of sets up the vision. And the hand of the Lord is with Ezekiel. He says he brought him out by the Spirit and set him in the middle of the valley. And it was full of bones. So you have this big valley. And he says in verse 2, He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He doesn't just say dry, very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Ezekiel knows God has the power. He's the creator God. But yet he's looking to God who knows all. And and then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these dry bones. I will put my breath into you. I will make my breath enter you and you will come to life. So I prophesied, he's a good prophet. I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling. Everybody say rattle. 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 There's a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked. Tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. You know, if you just have flesh and blood, but no breath in them, it's just a decaying carcass. So he says, then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. God takes those who were dead and he can put life into you and he can raise you up as a warrior, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are caught. We were cut off. That is what you call despair. Despair is when you lose hope. There may be someone listening today who understands the feelings of despair when you feel cut off, when you feel out of hope, when you are depressed and discouraged and you feel like there's no way out. And I want you to see the power of God in this chapter today. He says, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up for them. These people who are in exile, who are separated from Jerusalem, their hometown, they've been taken out of their city, out of their town, to a foreign place. They lost everything. They've lost hope. They're in despair. God says, I'm going to bring you up from your grave. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. When God changes your life and brings you from dry to life, you know he is the Lord and you know who did it. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So here's some points. Number one, Easter is not just about bringing eternal life after you die. There's kind of that thought sometimes with Christians. It's like, hey, say this prayer or do this thing and then It's kind of like taking out eternal life insurance and you're going to go to heaven. You know, live however you want or whatever. Life just sucks sometimes. Just do your best. But someday you're going to heaven. But God brings life into this life. Peter was one of the apostles that followed Jesus and began the church. 
And he wrote in 1 Peter 3, 21, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus. He says it's nothing magical in the water. Uh, otherwise, we could drag people off the street. Ah, I got another one, you know. It's not taking a bath. It's an answer of a good conscience toward God. I'm trusting in God to save me. And that baptism is a picture of that and the death and the burial and the resurrection. But he says, by the resurrection of Jesus, our, our salvation that he talks about, our coming into a relationship with God is God's doing, not man's doing. By the way, if you're a believer but you haven't been baptized, you'd like to be baptized, I love to do baptisms. I'm addicted to them. Let me know. We'll get a pool in here or something and I'll baptize you and we'll have a celebration. If you're online church and in another region somewhere, I can help you find somewhere where we can carry that out. And that's how the early church began and Jesus was baptized and he said, go make disciples, baptizing them. Of course, it's people who believe. It's not just a religious physical act, but out of our thoughts, our beliefs, our desire to follow him. It's a new birth, symbol of that new birth. Then Peter wrote to people who are suffering all kinds of trials. You know, maybe you understand the feeling of suffering all kinds of trials. And he says to them, praise be to God. What? Wait, you're going to praise God right now when we're going through all these trials, this persecution? He says, pray to be, be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope. Not a dead hope, a living hope that continues on and on every day of your life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He says our living hope is not tied to our circumstances in the world around us. Our living hope is anchored to an event that happened at the resurrection, the empty tomb. And our hope lives on and on all of our life and spills out into eternity. But it's not just about eternity. So verse 13 of Ezekiel 37, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And they go from dead to a vast army. And that's what happens to the church. When people become believers, God puts his spirit in his sons and daughters and we become a vast army army of love all over the world right now people are remembering the empty tomb with all our weaknesses and challenges and struggles we're still a vast army of love billions of people following jesus so number two you are never too far gone god speaks life he doesn't just say the bones are dry they're very dry Maybe you spiritually feel dry. You're human. We all go through ups and downs. We get beat up. And today I just want you to hear that God can bring life out of that spiritual dryness. It was a valley full of bones. He says, I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry, not just dry, very dry. Son of man, can these bones live Ah, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Prophesy to these bones, dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. The Hebrew word ruach can mean breath, wind, spirit, or spirit capitalized. It's used in those different ways. And God puts his spirit in us. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off, they say in verse 11. We're, we're cooked. Too much bad has happened. We are in despair. Nothing is impossible with God. That's what this is about. Nothing is impossible with God. There's Old Testament passage after passage like this one that teaches that even when things look dead and gone God can raise to life and nothing is impossible with God and Jesus shows up with man this may be impossible but with God all things are possible when my boy graduated from high school I gave him a dictionary and I wrote in the side the front cover you will find in this dictionary there is no word for impossible and I knew that because I cut it out with an exacto 
I wanted him to know as he went out into life that no matter what people say in the world says with God all things are possible and that boy that sometimes had some teachers that struggled with him that boy was a part of a great church this morning with a great Easter celebration with God all things are possible he's the God of creation he spoke the word the world into existence God said let there be light and there was light it's a lie that you can't be forgiven there's a it's a lie if you feel like you're too far gone i'll tell you why i know that because i felt that way because i ran from god and i did things that i'm ashamed of and i realized it wasn't so awesome like i thought it would be to run loose because i'd been in despair my dad had died and i lost my scholarship for football and everything wasn't going so good and i left and i realized it wasn't so rosy and i thought i'm too far gone and a beautiful girl helped me get back and i found out everybody gets to be forgiven that the power of jesus is not for the goody goodies and the church is not just for the goody goodies because the truth is we're all scumbags we all fall short of the glory of god and when christians start acting like they got it all together puke that's not the truth the truth is we're all trophies of god's grace on our best day our best deeds are filthy rags compared to the glory of god but god makes us trophies of his grace and so he uses a murderer and adulterer like david and he uses other people who fall short the harlot he rahab he uses over and over flawed people ordinary people like you and me to do extraordinary things why who gets the credit he does that's why we have no interest in being one of those churches that acts like we got it all together and judges other people we have one rule jesus and we let the Holy Spirit work on each of us and nudge us along and we grow and love each other whether we're uh, alike or not we're all different dry bones dry bones hear the word of the Lord this is what the sovereign Lord says I will put my breath in you and you will live nobody's too far gone when God speaks number three the day Jesus rose death died the day Jesus rose rose death died when you when you go to jail you want to be around the one who has the keys so i'm told i heard it from a friend when that door slides it's a lonely feeling is what they say and you want to be or at least hear that electronic click you want that door to open right and jesus says in revelation 118 i am the living one i was dead and now look i'm alive forever and ever i hold the keys of death and hades when jesus rose death died not only his but your death and my death and he has the keys for us to come out of our graves just as god said to ezekiel i'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them that's not just a vision in ezekiel listen to the new testament the apostle paul who wrote in first corinthians 15 after saying that 500 over 500 people saw jesus risen he says if there is no resurrection we're a joke but there is and over 500 saw them and he says i declare to you brothers and sisters that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable listen i tell you a mystery we will not all sleep but we'll be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye in the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with impality then saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory where O oh, death is your victory where O oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god he gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ anybody struggling with their mortal body these days anybody struggling with some pains from the perishable body paul says that one day all of us who are in christ will get an m 
perishable body. You're going to get a resurrected body. No more pains. It's going to be immortal. It will live forever. Therefore, he says, my dear brothers and sisters, I love this verse, stand firm. Let nothing no thing let nothing move you always give yourselves fully to the work of the lord because you know that your labor in the vain in the lord is not in vain there's times people will tell you it's in vain there are disappointments when you serve god there's people who misunderstand you they say things to hurt your feelings there's people that act all fired up for god in the church they really want to build they lose their zeal for some reason they lose it and you can go home and you can feel a little discouraged but then you remember the empty tomb and you hear paul's words let nothing move you always give yourselves fully to the Lord because you know that none, none of your work and your labor in the Lord is in vain. There are things in this world people pour themselves up that are in vain, that are temporary, but none of our work in the Lord, in ministry, in service, in outreach, it's never in vain. Even when people say it doesn't matter. You got to live for an audience of one. Because even when things don't go as you hope, you lay your head on the pillow. Was I trying to labor in the Lord? And you hear the Spirit say, it was not in vain. So 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. That's not the encouraging part of the, the verse. How you doing? Oh, I'm wasting away. Just hanging around wasting away. Though outwardly, we're wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We can try to take care of all our flaws and wrinkles in this fleshly body. We'll still run out of time. It's flesh. I don't care how many wrinkles we remove, how good we get it. It's flesh. But inwardly, he says through the resurrection, we found the proverbial fountain of youth. We're getting newer and newer and newer every day as we follow Jesus. Have you ever noticed that it's hard to get everything exactly the way you want it here on earth? Yeah. That's because God created you to live in heaven with him for eternity. Heaven is your ultimate home, not earth. You ever experience discontentment and dissatisfaction of this life? Not completely happy here. You're not supposed to be. If I could just get this right, everything's going to be great. Once I get that right, everything's going to be... No, you'll never get it all the way exactly like you want, and it won't last in this life. If you were totally happy on earth, you might think you could live without God. God created us to long for something better than this world. A human, a home in heaven with him is what we long for. A fish cannot live up on land because it wasn't made for that. And an eagle cannot be satisfied or feel satisfied if it never flies. It's got to be allowed to fly. You will never feel completely satisfied here on earth if you don't have a relationship with God. And if you're not headed toward home and heaven, you're never going to be happy because you were made for more. You were designed for more. You'll have happy moments here, but nothing compared to what God has planned for you in eternity. This is why some of God's promises seem unfulfilling sometimes in this life. Some prayers seem unanswered sometimes in this fallen world. Some circumstances seem unfair, but this life is not the end of the story. When you realize life on earth is just temporary, it radically alters your values, the decisions you make, the direction you head. Not just temporal things ruling your decision. You start deciding, uh, making decisions on eternal things. Like 2 Corinthians 4.18, we fix our eyes 
not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Easter is not just about bringing eternal life after you die. We're alive here. We can live now, and ultimately we're going home. You are never too far gone. God speaks life. It's a lie from the devil who's called a liar and accuser of the brothers who tells you you're too far gone. You can't change. You can't, you don't, you're too old. You missed your window. No, as long as you're here, God's not done with you because you're not, you're still here. And God uses all ages and people from all walks of life. The day Jesus rose, death died, and God will raise us from our graves. Dry bones, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put my breath in you and you will live. You will come to life. Because we're designed for more than this life, we expect to live this life to the max, to use it up, live it up until it's time to go. The next time you find yourself longing for more than this life offers you, remember, that's just evidence that you were made for something more. The disciples had been through so much disappointment leading up to the cross. This Jesus is not an easy guy to follow. I hear people say, oh, it would have been different. I could have been there with him to follow. Yeah. I don't know about that. He's a boat rocker. And they have in mind this physical kingdom, and he's the Messiah. And they're like, oh, here we go. We're going to overthrow Rome. And he keeps getting in fights with the religious leaders. What are you doing, Jesus? And he's clearing out the temple. Come on, Jesus. Aren't you going to be the Messiah? And, and, and this is going to be awesome. And then ultimately, he dies on a cross. He is taken, he is spat upon, he is beaten, he is mocked. The creator of the universe receiving spit from people he created and then he's pressed he's, he's taken on, down that road up to the, ro to the cross and they hammer nails through his wrists on the cross beam and lift it up on the upright beam and they nail his feet one foot in front of the other and he hangs there and people gamble for his clothes they make fun of him ah he saved others he can't save himself all he had to do was say, Michael! And Jerusalem would have been a hole in the ground. Instead he said, oh, Father, forgive them. They just don't know what they're doing. And he suffers. And the pain shoots up in his feet up to explode in his brain. And so he lets go and the pain shoots from his arms and explodes in his brain. And then he lifts back up to relieve his arms and the pain shoots up from his feet and explodes. And he goes up and down up and down and the disciples are scattered they don't understand they thought he was the messiah he didn't meet their expectations church didn't go like we thought it was going to go i wasn't getting a whole lot out of this you know it wasn't making me feel good and uh, so they, they 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 get back and they they withdraw and he's and he hangs on that cross they say doctors say until the time it would begin to cramp and he could no longer push up and that he would suffocate and die of a broken heart. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? What does that mean? He who knew no sin was made sin. He became sin on our behalf. He became my sin, your sin, to pay the price for us. And then he cries out, It is finished! And the veil in the temple rips, symbolizing that everyone now has access. Jew and Gentile, in the very presence of God, we don't have to go through a physical priest. We have the high priest, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed once and for all. And you and I can go from our church facility, from our bed at home, from our office, in our car. We can go anytime into the very presence of Yahweh, the Lord God, our loving God. And he hears us through the blood of Jesus. And he appeared to the disciples. And they're like, wow. And he says, I want you to go make disciples of all nations. 
And they're like, Lord, is it now you're going to restore the kingdom? They're still thinking about the kingdom. And they're thinking of a physical kingdom, perhaps still. He says, it's not for you to know the time that the Father is appointed. But I want you to go to Jerusalem. And there's a Pentecost celebration going on. A Jewish festival. And the people are gathered from all over for the Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. And they begin to speak and preach the gospel. And they're, they're basically saying, this is it. This is the one. This is the Messiah. You crucified the Messiah, the Savior. And they go, what shall we do? And Peter, bless his heart, the one who denied the Lord, preaches that message because God uses everybody who turns around. He says, let each of you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, for the promises for you and for all who are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call, he calls our hearts. And when we follow that call, we're buried with him in baptism. We repent. That means we turn. So from that big day of Pentecost, God raises up from the dead a vast army. A vast army that goes into the entire known Roman world. And we're a part of that. 2,000 years later, that army is still going. So finally, number four. Today is the day to hear the sound of of dry bones rattling. We've been through discouragements, challenges. Some of you may have felt despaired, and I don't say that to make you feel guilty. You're human. I've seen marriages in despair changed by God. I've seen singles who felt like they had to go through relationship after relationship, even though it wasn't built on a committed love, giving themselves away, and then they feel a rattle from the Spirit. They go, I'm going to get what I need from God right now. I'm going to draw close to God. And they find that God meets needs in their life that no human being can, can meet. And then if they do end up with someone later, they're a greater catch. I've seen them become before my eyes a greater catch. Not giving their body away to someone they don't love or doesn't love them and treat them like a, like a prince or a princess like they deserve. Rattle. It's time for somebody who's full of greed and always complaining to hear the rattle and to realize that, uh, that it's all going to burn in the big bonfire anyway. Don't live your life just for stuff. It's time for someone full of envy and jealousy and hatred to hear the rattle and to come to life and to learn to love and to forgive and to serve. But I feel bored in church. You need to rattle and listen to this message God came down, lived a perfect life, died for you on a cross, and rose from, you, from the grave, and you have eternal life, and you're bored. I just didn't get anything out of it. What'd you put into it? Maybe it's time to quit being selfish and seeing the church is about always meeting your needs and to realize as part of the church, you're here to serve others. Now, if you're new here, I'm not trying to scare the hell out of you, but... And you, you should feel okay to come with your needs. Jesus meets the needs. He healed the leper. And he healed people that have real hurts. But sooner or later, Jesus is going to do this to you. He's going to do a little twist. He's going to say, okay, I want you to go from come and follow to go and die. I want you to go lay down your life for others. And I find myself when I serve others. When I sit and say, poor me, and have a pity party, you know, my four kids and my wife, they never waltzed around me. Oh, how can we help you, Daddy? Poor you. But when I got on my knees and played with them and lived life, they were awesome. It was a blast. So maybe you need to hear the rattle today that it's not about you anymore. If you're new, though, it's okay to come. God, I have this hole in my heart. Please, God, make me joyful. Help me to be satisfied just in following Jesus. You know, I've been following this guy for four decades, and I never feel like, well, Jesus, I don't know, Jesus. The song wasn't good enough, so I don't know if I want to follow you, Jesus. You know, Jesus, I don't know. There's, there's some hypocrites there, you know. He pours himself out. He dies on a cross. He gives me meaning and purpose, and I'm going to get mad because I'm not excited all the time. I, you know what I do when I get hurt? I have a vision of my own that God put in my mind years ago. Every time I'm criticized 
are tempted to get discouraged. I see his back all beaten like a hulk of hamburger, carrying that cross, going all the way to the cross for me. And I think, how the hell am I going to quit and get, and get down and discouraged when my Lord went all the way? So here's my rattle challenge today. Number one, you and I say this, not with arrogance. I'm pleading with you. You need to become a self-feeder, a spiritual self-feeder. We saw with COVID, many people were not self-feeders. They fell apart when the church couldn't gather. Man, I was still reading the Bible and praying and watching our worship team on Zoom, and I was still being fed. It's not as good as hugging in person. But if you don't read the Word, if you don't have a relationship, I could see why you'd fall apart. We're giving you a gift today you're going to hear about in a minute. It's a resource where you can get all kinds of learning materials from your comfort of your home, from your phone or your computer. You can feed stuff for children, stuff for all ages. That's our gift from you. We'll share about it. You can be a feeder and walk with God. Number two, take the being challenge. You'll hear more about that. That's a 40-day challenge we're going to start. We're going to have, we have books available. They cost 18. We'll sell them to you for 10. If there's someone who can't afford 10, we want you to have one. We don't want anybody to leave without one. It's 40 days. We're all going through it together. It's to grow our personal relationship with God. Even if you don't feel like you know God, or even if you're not a believer, it might, it might not hurt to go through this and see if you're missing anything. You know, maybe, maybe it's worth the 40 days. I hope you'll join us on that. And uh, if you want to pay for the whole price, 18, we'll take it. Or if you want to buy two, we'll take it. But it's, it's 10 if, if you want to just get one. And so I hope you'll take that challenge and spend 40 days growing. Number three, challenge to Hope Church. Just as those bones rattled and came alive and stood as a vast army, let's take our stand to be that army of love. You know, they say, a poll last week I saw, church attendance is 50% down since COVID. We've connected online and in person, smaller numbers in person, but we've still stayed connected. I am so thankful to all of you for that. But I kind of I kind of stayed tight-lipped during this time about the future, really focusing on us staying alive. You know, I never, I don't remember when I preached 52 sermons in a row. I think I may have preached more than that. You may think, oh, poor you. I'm not complaining. I love it. But usually there's some vacation. I did a lifter almost every Thursday for over a year. You know why? Because I love you so much. You're my baby. And I wanted to be at my post. So I haven't missed. And I've committed to, to staying alive and being on the ridge. But I haven't said anything about building, you know. And I've looked at buildings on the main thoroughfare, and I've thought about it. It'd be cool to have a visible building where people drive by because I've enjoyed this, you know. But uh, uh, we have our insurance money. We took some of it and put it in a place where it's getting a little more percent. And uh, as I've continued to pray and talk to different leaders, uh, do we build on our present land, four or five acres that we've got now? We bought the lot next door. Do we look for another place? As I've talked to other places, I, that one hasn't come. And I was talking to a friend who's not a member of Hope. And I said, I'm trying to decide, do we get an existing place or do we build on our present land, you know, and put a metal building up like we talked before? He said, Hope Church is not the pretty building on the main street with a parking lot where people drive in and drive off. Hope Church is bonfires in the back and tents on Easter and luau's and uh, tailgate parties and he, he, they, they, they came there before they drove there once before why don't they do it again so what I'm recommending and I want to hear what you guys say and what the pastoral board and the team the leaders think but I think it's time to start drawing up plans on our present building and build yeah. and you know this 50 cent poll and all of that and we have had some hits and struggles but you know we're not done and until we're done 
Until we've gone to be with the Lord, we never quit. We never back off our mission. I'm fired up. I'm excited. I, from day one, have said, I'm not going anywhere. I love the ridge, and I want to, I want to build, and I want to watch us do it again. You know, we built, we built from 40 to pushing it and packing it and getting ready to double assembly. Campfire come. We go into town. We're down to 60 in Chica. We come back up. We push to 100. Well, COVID come. Okay? So we're down. But God's still here. I'm excited. Excited. I'm excited to be that church that never gave up and kept reaching out for just one more, just one more. So I, I challenge us, Hope Church, to rebuild, to hear the rattle, not just rebuild physical. The church is the people, not the steeple. Well, let's, let's rebuild and let's do it again and give God the glory. Amen. You know, Paul said that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection. A little girl said in Bible class, I know what Jesus' first words were at the resurrection. Some of you need to act like this is the first time you've heard this, okay? <laughs> the teacher said, you know what Jesus' first words were at the resurrection? And the little girl said, yes. Ta-da! <laughs> and that's what Paul is saying. He was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection. He said, I told you so. I am the Son of God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Listen, nothing is too impossible for our God who speaks life. You are not too far gone. You need to hear the rattle today of God's Spirit. You are... You are loved by God. And the day Jesus rose, your death died. And you have hope, eternal hope, because our God calls people out of their graves to live forever. Dry bones, dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put my breath in you and you will come to life. Let's pray. Father, I pray that today you will open our hearts that you will invade our hearts with the breath of your spirit. I pray especially for anybody feeling uh, beaten up today. God, I don't want them to go out of here on a guilt trip or um, depressed. God, I want your spirit to lift them up and you can do that. You bring life, God. I pray for anybody that's experiencing spiritual dryness. I know that feeling. Like they're scraping the bottom of the bucket. God, fill their bucket. Fill them up with your spirit and with joy and Anyone needing to forgive someone, God, give them that gift. Anyone feeling guilty, God, I pray for healing for people who've been molested. I pray for healing for people that are struggling through finances and dealing with fear. I pray for people to be brought to life through the power of your Holy Spirit. I believe with all my heart that you can do that, God. Make this their greatest uh, Easter ever. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's stand and worship God. Yes. Pen a 
Pentecostal fire is stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, cause resurrection power runs in my veins too. Yes, I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of travels rattling. Oh, One more time for Hope Rising. Thanks, guys. So uh, we have some next steps. Gina, what do we got? Yes, we have lots of next steps. So we've got our being challenge coming up. Yes. And we start our intro next Sunday. So you don't want to miss. We got yeah. books for sale in the back. And as Stan had said, it's yeah. more important that you get a book than that you pay for it. So it's, it's really cool when we're all going through something together like that and we can share and discuss it. So I hope you'll take the 40 day challenge and it'll bless your walk with God. That's right. And as part of that challenge, we have partnered with Right Now Media to offer you a free gift. We're really excited about this resource and we have a short video. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right now, media, it's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. 
we've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Amen. Awesome. So yeah, if you are already on our email list, you can take out your phone and open your email right now, and you have an invitation to sign up for this for free. And if you check your inbox, you can go ahead, don't, you can get your phone out in church, it's all right. I won't hold it against you. And if you don't have an email in there, there is a number up here that you can text HC Paradise to this number, 49775, and it will automatically send you an invitation. This is for every single one of you to use in your homes and to have for yourself. Yeah, you know, when I started the ministry, all we had were these things called books. You guys heard of books, right? And we'd fill our libraries. And uh, now you have access. You can go listen to Francis Chan, who's incredible. And people that are better than me, and much more. And, and if you can feed all you want. And so I'm excited to see how this is going to bless our, our church. Yeah. Yes. And Hope, actually, we have our own homepage. And there are things on there for our online family. You're going to have direct links to the growth group videos and growth group discussion guides that we're going to be going through in this 40 days, our Bean Challenge. Um, there is going to be other, other material that we recommend to you. And you're just going to see it right there. We're really excited to use this together. Man. What else we got? Well, we have growth groups going every yeah. week. Yeah. This week it'll be about the resurrection, and we'll talk about uh, this message that we got went through. I hope you'll check that out, and then we'll start the Being Challenge next week, and we'll have small groups on that. And remember, those groups are designed to be a group discussion, and so there is not a requirement on how much knowledge you have. So if you're having a hard time finding a group that fits your schedule, maybe it's time to lead a group. And all that means is you welcome people into a space, you maybe serve some water, and follow the guide. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Just our men's Bible study. Yes, men's Bible study. Um, and our archery. Our archery ministry starting. Uh, that's already full though, right, Joe? This go around, that's full, but he'll offer it again. Um, is it true Donald's starting a fishing ministry or is he kidding? Oh, he's, he's serious. Oh, he wants to start, start a, fishing a fishing ministry. ministry yeah. So that's awesome. Stay tuned for that also. Hey, now it's time to pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great attendance today and for these courageous brothers and sisters. Um, it's so encouraging to see each other. And Lord, thank you for the victory we have because of the empty tomb that cannot be taken away. Lord, continue to make us a force of hope on the ridge and beyond that brings you glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, before we give, what is our purpose? Building relationships that last forever. forever. How do we do that? Love, love God, God. Love, love people. people. And remember, every day this week, in Christ, we, we always, always have, have hope. hope. Thanks for being here, everyone. Happy Easter. Ooh, ooh, I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved My feet are on the rock Ooh, I can feel the waters rise I can hear the howling lies that call me Fear won't hold me down My feet are on the rock Here we go! I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give way I'll be dancing in the rain My feet are on the rock ooh, ooh. I can see the morning light Feel the joy on the horizon Here my faith is found Stand on solid ground And I feel my hope about to break I will bring to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give way Ooh, ooh, 
rock, I stand all over the ground and sink in sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all over the ground and sink in sand. So stomp your feet, clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. Come on. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all over the ground and sink in sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. And I feel my hope about to break. I will be to your unchanging grace. Amen, Hope! It's been a wonderful Easter celebration with you, and we're so glad you came. We hope you have a wonderful week, and we want you to know that we love you.